Wisdom, the final frontier to true knowledge. Welcome to Wisdom Trek, where our mission is to create a legacy of wisdom, to seek out discernment and insights, to boldly grow where few have chosen to grow before. Hello, my friend. I am Guthrie Chamberlain, your captain on our journey to increase wisdom and create a living legacy. Thank you for joining us today as we explore wisdom on our second millennium of podcast. This is day 1051 of our trek, and it is Wisdom Wednesday. Creating a biblical worldview is important in order to have a proper perspective of today's current events. To establish a biblical worldview, it is required that we also have a proper understanding of God's Word. Especially in our Western cultures, we do not fully understand the scriptures from the mindset and the culture of the authors. In order to help us all have a better understanding of some of the more obscure passages in God's Word, we are investing Wisdom Wednesdays reviewing a series of essays from one of today's most prominent Hebrew scholars, Dr. Michael S. Heiser. He has compiled these essays into a book titled, I Dare You Not to Bore Me with the Bible. There are few biblical topics that elicit as much excitement and conflict as the interpretation of the rapture and the second coming of Christ. In today's essay, we will explore passages that cover how many times is Jesus coming back. Few things in the Bible attract more attention than the prophecies about the end times. Even people with only a passing acquaintance with the Bible know that it foretells the second coming of Christ. Those who study the Bible know that the book of Revelation reveals that the second coming brings the end to the reign of the Antichrist, or referred to as the Beast, in Revelation chapter 19, verses 11 through 21. The risen Christ, the incarnation of God, returns to earth not as a suffering savior, but as a glorious warrior king. But does the Bible describe an earlier return of Jesus, one that precedes this triumphal entry? Let's first look at what is referred to as the rapture. Some Christians believe that 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 16 and 17 describe how all believers will be taken from the earth, dead or alive, at the appearing of Jesus before the second coming as described in Revelation chapter 19. Let's read that passage in Thessalonians. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a commanding shout, with a voice of the archangel, and with the trumpet call of God. First, the believers who have died will rise from their graves. Then, together with them, we who are still alive and remain on the earth will be caught up in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. Then we will be with the Lord forever. This earlier return of Jesus is referred to as the rapture by believers who embrace this idea. The term is derived from the Latin word rapimur, from rapio, meaning to carry off, which was used by the translators of the Latin Vulgate for the Greek word hapazo, translated caught up in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4:17 Other Christians however reject the idea that 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 speaks of a different event of the return of Jesus to the earth described in Revelation chapter 19 For them there is only one return of Jesus in the future So who is right Well we need to look at a concept called harmonizing To answer the question is it depends If we were to read all the passages in the New Testament that speak of Jesus' future return, along with the Old Testament passages that speak of the final climatic visitation of God on earth that will put an end to evil and referred to as the day of the Lord, we would notice immediately that they do not agree on details or descriptions. For example, 1 Thessalonians 4, verses 16 and 17 seemingly has Jesus returning in the air, gathering believers into the clouds, whereas the prophet Zechariah foretold a physical arrival of the pierced Lord on the Mount of Olives with his holy ones at the day of the Lord, Zechariah chapter 12, verse 10, and chapter 14, verses 1 through 5. And this can be compared with Revelation chapter 10, verse 14. This scenario may appear to have conflicts. Interpreters are forced to make a decision. Should we take the verses and split them into two events, or should we harmonize them? The former approach produces two events, a rapture and a second coming. Harmonization, the second approach, eliminates the rapture and leaves only one event, the second coming. Harmonization is a tried and true method frequently used by interpreters to resolve disagreements between the gospel accounts of Jesus' life. It is also used to reconcile Old Testament accounts of the Israel history recorded in Samuel, Kings, and Chronicles. But many see the harmonizing differences as inconsistencies between biblical prophecies. 
The Bible doesn't telegraph which interpretive approach is correct. There is no appendix on interpretation following the book of Revelation. Both views are based on choices that we bring to the text. Neither is self-evident as biblical position. This realization should prompt us to act with humility and love toward each other, no matter what position that we actually take. And that will conclude our essay for this week. Next Wisdom Wednesday, we will continue with the New Testament as we look at Dr. Heiser's next essay titled, What is Jesus Waiting For? I believe that you'll find this another interesting topic to consider as we build our biblical worldview. Tomorrow, we will continue with our three-minute humor nugget that will provide you with a bit of cheer, which will help you to lighten up and live a rich and satisfying life. So encourage your friends and family to join us and to come along with us tomorrow for another day of Wisdom Trek, Creating a Legacy. If you'd like to listen to any of our past 1,050 treks or read the Wisdom Journals, they are all available at wisdom-trek.com. I encourage you to subscribe to Wisdom Trek at your favorite podcast player so that each day's trek will be downloaded to you automatically. And thank you so much for allowing me to be your guide, your mentor, but most importantly, I am your friend as I serve you through the Wisdom Trek podcast and journal. And as we take this trek of life together, let us always live abundantly, love unconditionally, listen intentionally, learn continuously, Lend to others generously, lead with integrity, and then leave a living legacy each day. I am Guthrie Chamberlain, reminding you to keep moving forward, enjoy your journey, and then create a great day every day. It's your choice. See you tomorrow.